Hello and welcome to H5P Interactive Presentation. In this presentation, we're going to go over inserting a video, inserting text, images and multiple choice questions, fill in the blanks, single choice and true or false, drag and drop activities. But first, how do we set up the tool? As always, we'll go to the tile where we want the tool and click Add Activity or Resource. Navigate to H5P and click Course Presentation. So first, we're going to name our project. Then we select the video icon from the list of tools on the top. When you press the plus, you enter the YouTube URL and give the video a name. And then click insert and done. You then resize the video to take up as much of the slide as you wish. For this slide, I'm going to change the background color slide background, change it from template to this slide and click color fill background. And when you're happy with your color, you simply click X. To add some text, we're going to hit the text icon, give our text box a name and in the text field marked with an asterisk is where our body of text goes. Press done when we're done. I'm just going to move this out of the way for now. When I've added more stuff, I'll have to reshape and resize everything to suit. To add an image, we're going to click the image tool, give the image a name, click the add button and select whichever image you wish and then click done. Again, at this point, I'm not going to worry too much about the shape and size. To add a multiple choice question, click multiple choice from the top, type in your question and then type in your answers and hit correct over each correct answer. Unlike the single choice set tool, you can have multiple correct answers in this. And when you're finished, press done. Now I can get around to reshaping and resizing everything in my window to fit. For the fill in the blanks activity, I'm going to quickly change the background color as I did before, and then click the fill the blanks icon on the top. Fill the blanks is simply a statement in which some of the words will be left for the student to fill. In order to specify which words you want to be left blank, just mark them with an asterisk at the start and end. And once you've clicked done, you can shape it and size it to suit your slide. And just like we did for the last slide, I'm going to add an image. But for this image, I'm only going to use part of it. So I click Edit Image. The Crop tool is on the top. And then just select the part of the image that you want to keep. And then click the little green tick box when you're done. And save. For this slide, again, we're going to change the background. It's important to select this slide in the slide background menu, otherwise you'll change the background to all the slides. The single choice set interaction is very similar to the multi-choice set, except there can only be one right answer. So when you type your question into the question box, make sure the first answer you type in is the correct one, as you can see marked with the red asterisks. You can have as many incorrect answers as you like then by pressing add answer. And when you're done, click done. To add a true or false question, select true or false from the menu on top and very simply type the statement in and select whether it's true or false. And then click done. Just like we did before, I'm going to reshape and resize everything and I'm going to add an image. To add a drag and drop interaction, we first click drag and drop, click the add button to select an image we wish to use. 
And now we're ready to move on to step two, which is adding drop zones. To add a drop zone, click the drop zone icon. I like to change the background opacity to zero. And when you've clicked done, you can see the drop zone appears over your image and you will have to reshape and resize it. And you can repeat this process for all your drop zones. When we're done arranging our drop zones, we need to add some text boxes. It's important to select all drop zones for each text box. This means the student has the option to drop that on any drop zone and it's up to them to select the correct one. And we're just going to repeat this step then for all of our text boxes. Once we have all our text boxes made, we then need to assign each text box to a drop zone. If you press the edit pencil in each drop zone, you can assign it to its corresponding text box. And you simply repeat this process for all the drop zones. And when you're done, simply click done. You then have to reshape in size as normal. And finally, we have the finished product. So as you can see, the first slide consists of a video. The second slide consists of a body of text and a multiple choice answer with an image. Third slide is a fill in the blanks question. Next up, we have a single choice set question where there's only one right answer and a true or false question. And finally, we have the drag and drop activity where the student drags the text box into the corresponding drop zone. And when the student reaches the end of the presentation, they're given an overall summary of all the questions they've answered. They're also provided with an option to review all the questions again. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on the interactive presentation tool and we'll see you in the next one.